Hi everybody, Claire here from Van Nuys Labradoodles and we're here today with the seven week update for the Blonde Brownies litter. These multi-gen Australian Labradoodle puppies are going to mature to medium sized dogs and today we're going to talk about their past week, their accomplishments and primarily focus on what we learned from their wellness exams at the vet earlier this week. And then after we do that with each of the puppies, uh, we're going to go and give you a little bit of a demonstration on various uh, personal care for each of the dogs. So we're going to do some of that with puppies so that you learn how to clip their nails, clean their ears, how to brush and comb them, how to deal with their eyes. And then we'll also use Ripple and Smoochers and give you a little bit more of a demonstration on using various products and also what you're going to be looking to doing in terms of nail clipping and grooming once your puppy gets a little bit older. So today we're going to start with this beautiful little sable party labradoodle and this is Peach Collar and as you'll probably remember from our earlier videos, Peach Collar is going to Spokane. She is going as a breeding prospect to another labradoodle breeder in Washington State. So we're going to start with her. At her wellness exam, what our vet, whose name is Ian, had to say about Peach was that she really had a really delightful temperament. She was a little bit sassy to him at first when he first tried to look in her ears and listen to her heart. She said, hmm, I don't know you. What do you think you're doing? And then about two seconds later, she said, oh, okay, you're a nice guy. And that sort of sums up Peach's uh, temperament. She likes to check you out first before she decides if you're worthy of her attention. So she got a complete clean bill of health. And when we go for our vet exams, uh, Ian checks their ears. He looks right down them into their eyes. He also checks their dentition and their bites. He checks and listens to see if they have any heart murmurs or any concerns in that regard. And he also checks genitalia. He also looks then through and looks at their skin, their coat condition, we weigh them and we just overall go through the whole thing to make sure they're in good shape. He also tests on their hind here, in the back here, to make sure there's no slipped hocks, there's no luxating patellas or anything of concern in that regard. So Peach, as I said, she got a perfect bill of health. And if you're wondering why Peach is the one that was chosen to be a breeding prospect, uh, there's a, a few things that go into that. Uh, temperament is a huge issue and she does have a wonderful temperament. You also have to have a girl or a boy who's able to handle the responsibility of being a breeding dog, especially if you have one of the girls. It's a big job to be a mom, as you know if you are a mom yourself. So we have to have a dog with a very stable, calm, and nurturing type of temperament. Peach has that. And then the other part of the equation is, of course, their health, uh, which we've already tested. All of her DNA testing has already been returned, and she's all clear for absolutely everything, which is always great news. And then the remaining part is their structure. So there's a breed standard for Labradoodles that's set out by both the Worldwide Australian Labradoodle Association and other associations, and that's the breed standard that we adhere to. And so just just as a quick little going over for you with Peach, one of the things we look for as breeders is that she has a nice short nose. That's one of the main attributes of Labradoodles. Then we look for a nice, good, strong stop. And a stop, I'll take that, I don't want to show you my stop. The stop is where the nose meets the forehead. And you want it to be sort of um, at a 90 degree angle like that. And we just do that by feel. The eyes should be moderately set apart and they should be nice big expressive eyes which this little lady has and then from there we go and make sure that she's not too long she's not too square in the body that she has the right leg length in proportion to her body we feel for her lay back in her shoulders and the reason for that is so that she can reach forward with her legs and be able to drive forward properly in the back, we want her tail to, and her croup to be in the right place. We don't want her tail to be up like this, as uh, having the tail in the wrong area can affect how their rear assembly is and whether they can push off and have power in the hind end. So same thing, we want to check for the angulation in the hind end here and that everything's in the right place. So Miss Peach, she got an A+. She was this perfect, and we are sure proud of her, and we think she's going to make a beautiful addition for Carol in Spokane. So I'm going to trade now with 
Reynolds, and I'm going to give him Peach, and Fisher is coming into the picture. This is Mr. Black Collar, and you can notice there's a big size difference between Fisher and Peach Collar, and Peach Collar's name, by the way, now is Star. Uh, that's what her breeder has named her. So you'll notice today when you're looking at the puppies that quite a few of them are dirty and that's because it's pouring rain, but that does not stop them from wanting to go outside and play. So they've just come in from uh, a little bit of an outdoor playtime. So some of them will have some dirt on them. You can see that Fisher has some nice dirty paws. He has a little bit of dirt on his tummy there and his face is a little bit wet from being out in the rain. Uh, one thing that's great about this litter is they all enjoy the water. Nobody's afraid of the rain. They like to play in the puddles. It's really quite fun to watch. So Fisher's uh, vet check was also an A+. Plus. There was nothing wrong at all. He has both testicles. His bite is excellent. And his ears are all clear. And his heart's clear. Everything's in the right place. And he's just in, in great shape. And Ian also mentioned uh, when he was looking at Fisher about what a sweet and calm disposition he has. So again, perfect for Fisher's upcoming career as a fully certified uh, service dog. Right, Fisher? Yes. So he did a great job. So that's Fisher. And now we're going to have Mr. Green Collar. Hello, Mr. Green. And Rena will take Fisher away. Hello, handsome. It's Mr. Green Collar here. Mr. Green also got rave reviews for his temperament. He is such a cuddle bug and he just snuggles right up into your neck. He's very nice and calm now. And you'll remember, as I've said a couple of times now, when he was first a baby, he was a little bit of a, of a devil at first and now he's uh, matured into a very sweet, kind and affectionate little fellow. So Mr. Green has a perfect bite, and you'll see he has that similar, very short, lovely nose that Star has. His ears are all clear and his heart's clear. And at the examination, he was only presenting one testicle. Sometimes that happens because they're a little bit afraid and they pull one up. Sometimes one's not quite down yet. There's a variety of reasons that that can happen for. So Mr. Green will go on the scheduled surgery day to be neutered. And if he only has one testicle at that time, then he won't have his surgery and he'll be placed in his home on what we call a contract. And we'll wait until he's six months old to neuter him. That way we like to give time for the testicle to descend on its own, in which case it's great, easy peasy, and it's a less invasive surgery. If the testicle does not descend by six months, then it's a little bit more of a process to neuter him because the vet has to go and actually look for it. So usually it's just up in the groin area a bit. It's nothing major, uh, but we do like to wait and give them the chance for it to, to drop on its own. It's not an unusual situation. It happens quite regularly with boys. So that's it. Otherwise, Mr. Green is a-OK -okay and still my favorite color and just the most handsome boy in the world. Yes, he's a lovely dog. And you can see how nicely he just sits here. He's not the least bit perturbed. Happy to just do whatever I ask him to do. So that's our handsome Mr. Green. Now we have one of the chocolate sable parties coming and this is Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown collar. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. This is Miss Yellow Collar. Wrong one. Got the sexes mixed up. Oopsie. Hope she didn't hear. So this is our little Yellow Collar girl. And Miss Yellow Collar girl, you can see as well, has that lovely short nose. She has the beautiful big eyes that are so expressive. Her tail's in the right place. Everything's great. Her heart was fine. Her ears were fine. She's just a great girl. Now she does have one condition that's a little bit different and she has what we call a wry jaw. So what that means, and that's wry is W-R-Y, not wry that she's drinking. What that means is one side of her jaw is absolutely perfect and the other has a couple of crooked teeth in it. That's got some crooked teeth. So it's no different from uh, having your child need braces because they have a big space in their teeth or their teeth are too crooked or too crooked, too close together, and so they need braces to help them out with that. So yellow collar girl's not going to get braces. What we are going to do though when she goes for her space surgery is we're going to pull out one of her baby teeth. Um, if they're 
particularly out of whack. We will pull them out just to make it a little more comfortable for her and to help the adult tooth come in a little bit more readily. So with these kinds of conditions, it's, it's also called um, a base narrow canine. Uh, these conditions resolve on their own. The adult teeth come in just fine and it doesn't affect their health at all. And she certainly, oops, uh oh, we got somebody who got stuck there, she just put their foot through the gate, got a little pinch. It's all right, crisis averted. Anyways, um, she's not in any discomfort or pain and it isn't causing her any problem. She certainly can eat, as you can see, she's in perfect health, her weight's good. And she too is a lovely, nice, calm, quiet, even tempered little girl. We just think that she's the sweetest, right? Mwah! Love you, little yellow. Now we have Mr. Brown that I got mixed up for here. Here is our handsome Mr. Brown. And Mr. Brown uh, is a little bit larger than Miss Yellow. And you'll see the dark on his face is almost all cleared out now. He doesn't have very much of the dark sabling left there. Hello, buddy. Hi. Mr. Brown is also a sweet, calm, happy little guy. And you can see he makes really strong eye contact. He likes to look at you and get a lot of feedback from you. And he does a lot of communicating with his pretty hazel eyes that he has there. And Mr. Brown also has perfect teeth, he has perfect eyes, his heart's good, his tail's in the right place, but like Mr. Green, he at this point just has one testicle. So again, we'll do the same thing with Mr. Brown. He will go in on the surgery day. If his testicles are both there, he'll be neutered. If not, he'll be sold on a contract basis and his family will have him neutered at six months. And just to be clear, we still cover the cost of that. There, there's no additional charge for the family. Everything's just the same as normal. It's a very common occurrence, as I said. And so that's what we're doing with Mr. Brown. And you can see he too is really happy just to be up here and hang out with me. Doesn't mind that he's on a table or away from his litter mates. He just thinks this is just really fun to get all the attention one on one. And you can see that beautiful eye contact he has. So that's Mr. Brown. And now we are going to see Mr. Blue Collar. Mr. Blue Collar, as you can see, is quite a bit bigger than Mr. Brown. You can also see that he has a big schmuck of mud on his back here. So he must have been uh, doing a little bit of tumbling around outside when he was there. Mr. Blue Collar is a lovely dog. Uh, he's actually uh, pretty much breeder quality. And if we needed a male, we probably would have kept him, but we already have his daddy, so he will be placed as a pet, despite the fact that he has many attributes that would make him a great breeding quality dog. So you can see he too has that really nice short nose. He's got a strong stop. His ears are in the right place. His eyes are very expressive, this little fellow. Uh, he has beautiful, beautiful, long black lashes, eyelashes, which really show off his beautiful eyes. So his eyes are actually hazel as well, but they're a very, very dark hazel. They'll probably are going to morph into a chocolate brown eye, which just gives him that tall, dark and handsome look. So Mr. Blue, he has everything going on that's just right. His ears are clear, his heart is fine, his bite is perfect. His tail is right and he does have the requisite two testicles. So he will be neutered on the regular surgery day. He's just a great guy and you can see he too is quite happy to be up here with me. He's maybe a little bit more interested in going somewhere than the other two were, but he's still a nice calm puppy. And next up we have Miss Purple. Hello Miss Purple. And now one thing I really like about this little girl is when I said her name, you saw right away she gave a little tail wag. Hi, honey. How are you, Kissy Pie? She too has extraordinarily strong eye contact. You can see that she's focused on me. That's where she wants to look. And she's looking to me for information as to, okay, how are you feeling? What's going on? She really is a, a delightful little girl. She has many, many qualities that I find particularly adorable in Labradoodles, but mostly the fact that she's lots of fun, she's got lots of energy, but she also just is very happy to cuddle up and snuggle with me. 
So at uh, Ms. Purple's bed examination, again, she was all clear. Her teeth are perfect, her ears, her heart, her tail, and everything about her is just exactly as it should be. Good weight, coat's in excellent condition, everything was just exactly how Ian likes to see it. So she got a, a very high passing grade, didn't she? Yes, you did. And she has beautiful hazel eyes as well. So th that's Miss Purple. And off she goes. And we have our little feisty girl. Oh, we can hear Mr. Blue is very sad that he's not on camera anymore. So this is our little feisty gray collar girl. And you hear me talking about how fierce she is and how she is also fearless. And right now she's in one of her cuddly quiet modes. So much as she's a tenacious little girl and she has no problem standing up for herself, she also is a very sweet, affectionate, oh yes, a very kissy and lovey little girl. She has a really nice uh, temperament that's, that's very nicely matched. So she can keep up with anyone. She'll never be afraid of anything. Uh, she's a great dog for one that it would be in daycare or one that would maybe be left alone a bit during the day. She's great with kids, other dogs. Nothing scares this little one. She's just a doll all the time and always in a particularly lovely and spunky mood. So you can see with her, she also has that shorter nose, very strong stop. She has a very nice pronounced stop. Her teeth were perfect. Her ears were perfect. Are you perfect? Her heart was perfect. The only thing she has is a very, very small umbilica hernia. And those occurred generally when mom or me, if, if mom's not doing it, are cutting the cord at birth. So when mom does it, she has the whole puppy in her mouth and she saws back and forth to sever the umbilical cord. And sometimes when she's doing that, when she has other puppies, and you'll remember that gray collar girl was the last puppy born, so Spirit already had the other seven puppies in the nest. And while she's struggling to do that and not step on any of her puppies or squish them, they're trying to nurse, sometimes they do a little extra shaking and they can do a little tiny hernia by just pulling a little too hard. If it's my fault, that's when we have a mom who does not like to sever the cord themselves. And when I've done it, I've pulled on it a little bit too hard when I've clamped it usually. But in this case, this was Spirit, uh, because I know Spirit Spirit did everybody's cords with this litter. Her first litter, she had me do the first two puppies. And ever since then, she said, thanks a lot, but I can handle this. It's much better when mom does it. Uh, they tend to leave the cord intact for longer and there's lots of vital nutrients that go through the umbilical cord to the baby. So that's all that she has. That little hernia will also be fixed at the time that she has her space surgery. Uh, it's a very minor procedure, but we just like to close them up before we send them home with you. I don't like to leave them open. While they will heal on their own, we just prefer to do that for you and, and have everything looked after when you take your baby home. So that's the last puppy for today, and that's their vet checkups. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and do some grooming and care of the puppies at various stages. So we're going to start with one of these puppies, uh, so you know how to look after your own infant when they come home. And then we're going to move from that to Smoochers, who's six months old. And we'll show you how the care will change a bit with a slightly older dog. And then we'll finish up with Ripple, who is a mature adult. Ripple is actually pregnant right now. And we'll show you the, the difference that we do in terms of care for an adult. So we'll get that all set up and we'll be right back showing you about grooming. So here we are with Gray Collar Girl, and we're going to do a little bit, uh, use her as our little demo puppy to show you some basic grooming things that uh, go on with your puppy when you take them home. So sometimes people are really afraid of what they need to do to keep their puppy clean and how often to do it. So when you get your puppy, she's going to come home to you all nicely groomed and bathed up. And you want to try to avoid bathing your puppy for as long as possible. Um, I don't mean like for a year or anything like that, but you certainly don't want to be giving them a bath every week or anything like that because it dries their skin out. 
Dogs are not like us where we wash our hair every day or once a week. So with a puppy, you want to try to avoid having her have a full bath for at least a couple of months. They won't need to go to the groomer for anything to do with their coat because it's just going to continue to grow and develop and, and you're not going to be trimming that for at least a good four to five, even six months. Uh, when we look at Smoochers next after Gray Collar Girl, you'll see what his coat is like and he has never had a trim to his coat. But what you do want to trim is, excuse me, can I blow your face? Is around their face. You need to have their eyes trimmed up regularly. Labradoodle's hair grows over their eyes really fast. And you'll see lots of pictures of Labradoodles with, you know, great big shaggy hairdos over their eyes. Um, that's not really ideal for a couple of reasons. One, just like you and I, if your hair is over your eyes, you can't see very well. And that's really frightening to a dog, especially a young puppy, when they, they can't see everything accurately. So you don't want that to happen. Um, two, just like with humans, it will make your, the dog's eye travel to avoid the hair, and you can end up with a turned in eye or a turned out eye or even a lazy eye, which of course you also don't want to do. And also, as you heard me talk about earlier when we were doing the vet information portion of the video, uh, Labradoodles are known for their really strong eye contact. Oh, yes. Do you have good eye contact? Yes, you do. That is one of the traits that people find so endearing about them. It's also how your dog communicates with you. Your dog can't talk to you other than using their body. And their eyes are one of their strongest communicators. They want to look to you to read what's in your eyes and what your facial expression is. And you want to be able to look at theirs and gauge what their emotional level is. So for all those reasons, you do want to keep their eyes nicely trimmed and their face short. Now, you will get from us a, a guide to how to groom your Labradoodle that you can give to your, your groomer. Um, I would start checking around uh, go on the Facebook owner's page for Vanna Labradoodles and ask people, say, hey, I live in Victoria in the Saanich area. Who do you recommend as a good groomer? And also on the Facebook owner's page, check out the pictures. Go, oh, wow, that puppy looks great. That's exactly the kind of cut I'm hoping for. Ask that person, where did you get your puppy groomed at? Take the picture, download it onto your camera and take that with your groomer as well. I would interview groomers. I would ask them for their book. Their book is sort of their portfolio. And look and see how many Labradoodles they've done and make sure they're not making them look like a poodle or a schnauzer or trimming them up super short. Now, some people prefer to keep their dogs in a really short coat. Um, we certainly don't keep ours in full coat because it's way too much work. They get way too messy and you'd spend forever grooming them. So we keep ours in about a mid-length coat. That way it's easy enough to maintain. They still look adorable and have that true Labradoodle coat. When you cut them really short and have them clipped to an inch or less, they tend to look very poodly and not really representative of the breed. But if that's your, that's what you like, it's of course your dog. And you can have your puppy look however you, you wish. Um, there will be times, no doubt, when you are going to have to have your puppy that is going to be losing his, his coat because he's got mats or something else. And you see Grey Collar decided she would eat the foam off my microphone. So I'm just going to put that over there, <laughs> the little monkey. They put everything in their mouths right now, so you always have to be aware. Uh, but the, if, you, if you have them uh, in the short coat, sometimes you have to do that if you haven't had them to the groomer regularly enough and they develop some mats. So what you want to do is set up a schedule so that about every other or every third day you're grooming your puppy. When you bring your puppy home, you want to start doing that probably about the third day that you've had your puppy home with you and make it a pleasant experience. It's just like socializing, it needs to be positive. You need to be relaxed and in a good mood and you don't want to scare your puppy and you don't want to do it for too long. With Grey Collar here, she's been on here long enough. You can see she's getting fidgety. We'll probably trade off to a different puppy so I can show you the nails. But what I'll do is I'm going to show you how to use the brush and the comb. So the brush that you want to use for Labradoodles is a slicker brush. 
Any other brush, like a pin brush, will not go through their coat properly and will not relieve the mats. And then you're going to end up with a dog who's in a big mess. You're trying to bite me. So we offer these for sale. They're $35. They work really well. They have a nice wooden handle. And all you want to do at first with your puppy is you just want to go like this. You don't, you're not really trying to actually groom them. You just want them to be used to having the brush on their body, getting used to that feel, thinking that's really quite fun. Having a treat is always a good idea. I think, oh, what a good girly. What a good girly, yeah. Make sure you put it over their head. You do their ears. You do a bit on their face, under their neck here, down their toes. And that's about all I would do. That's plenty long enough. The type of comb you want, this is called a butter comb. This is a Chris Christensen comb. Um, and I will give you the link for this below. Uh, these are available off of Amazon. They are an expensive comb, but I've had this comb since 2005. Uh, they're very well constructed and they're, they're a great comb. Uh, my personal preference is to have the one that's a half and half where there's a fine a finer tooth here and then the bigger one here, but they're called butter combs. And what you want to remember with the comb is you don't go like this on the dog. You could go like this on yourself and that's a little bit uncomfortable. You want to go at an angle so you're getting the coat, but you're not ripping off on their skin there. So just like that. And again, we're just going to do this for a couple of minutes. If we had a treat, we'd give her one. Here we go, what a good girly. <gasps> what a good girly Grace. Oh, she's such a good girl. All she wants to do is eat the microphone. I'm sorry if you're listening to a bunch of racket from her. And most importantly, remember just to touch her face with it. That's usually where they tend to be sensitive is on their face. And that's all you have to do for grooming them. Now, puppies, if your puppy gets dirty, and I said I don't want you to put your puppy in the bath, uh, what you want to do is get a towel and briskly rub them off and mud will fall off of Labradoodles in very short order. Use the towel to wipe their feet off completely so you don't have mud all over your clothes and all over your house and just dry them off that way and you'll find they're clean right away. If they're really dirty, you can always get these baby wipes that you can find at Walmart or Superstore or Thrifties or wherever you want to go and you can use those to clean them off if you really need to especially if you want to keep their little faces cleaner if they have uh, weepy eyes or anything then you want to wipe off their face that's the kind of thing you want to use and if you really get into a wreck and she rolls in poop or something disgusting this Seuss uh, dry shampoo is fabulous it's not a sticky one, you just shake it and it comes out in a foam, just like that. And all you do is rub it in. It's safe to use on the puppies. It dries almost instantly and it does a great job and it also has a quite a nice scent. It's not an overpowering scent or anything like that. So we highly recommend the Seuss products. Uh, one of the really nice benefits of the Seuss products is that they have ingredients. They're all natural, Dead Sea minerals and other essential oils, but they're natural flea and tick repellers. So we don't use flea and tick products on our dogs, and we don't have fleas and ticks. And part of the reason for that is because of the products that we use. So this is the shampoo that we have. Um, so we actually have uh, the shampoo and the dry shampoo available if you wish to purchase either of those before you take your puppy home. And this is a puppy formula. So we're gonna let Gray Collar go now because she's just getting herself all wound up. And instead we are going to bring in Mr. Brown Collar. And we're gonna use Mr. Brown Collar as our demo dog for what we do with their feet. So one of the most important things is you want to always be handling your puppy from head to toe multiple times a day. Take their ears up, put your fingers in their ears, pick their tail up, put your hand between their legs, touch their genitalia so that they're comfortable with that. You want to put your hands in their mouth, just like this, touch their gums, open up their mouth, put your fingers in there so they're used to that as well. And then what you also want to do is handle their feet every day. So you want to touch their feet like this and go, how sweetheart. 
in between each one of their toes, in their pads, because these are tickle spots, just like your feet might be ticklish, so are theirs. So you can see Mr. Brown has a little bit of a ticklish thing here, but we want to be doing this every day so he becomes so accustomed to you touching his feet that it's no big deal. Now, clipping their claws. This is something that terrifies a lot of people because they're afraid of cutting them too close. If you have a puppy that has black claws, it is a little bit harder. If you have a puppy with, and you can see Mr. Brown Collar here has, has a, um, actually a three color claw. It's kind of a brown and a black as well as white. So his are a little darker and it's a little bit more difficult to see the end of his, his uh, claw. So his claw is the same as your fingernail. Where it's pink is alive, where it's white is dead. We just use normal people clippers for the puppies for about the first three to six months when we do their claws. It's much easier to have control and it's much less likely that you're going to make a mistake. So all you want to do is take your puppy and secure the puppy under your arm. If you feel unsure, get somebody to help you. And then you just get the claw out and see you'll see that they're going to fiddle around because there are puppies. You put the clipper in. If you can see because you have a white claw, you go to the bit that on the nail that isn't pink, so you know it's dead, and you have to have lots of patience to do this, not be in a hurry, because your puppy may make you wait for quite a while to do it. He may want to eat the clippers. As you can see, Mr. Brown is giving us a really good demonstration of why you need patience. And then once you get to the point where the puppy is going to let you, you get the claw, you just go to the end, and you just clip it like that. And you see how he didn't even flinch, didn't even realize what I was doing. You'll feel that there's a little groove right at the end of the nail, and that will tell you that that's where you want to clip. If you do have a problem and you do clip too far, don't be too alarmed. Your dog will screech, and you'll think that you've amputated their foot. Don't worry. It's painful, but not the end of the world, and it will bleed profusely. Nails bleed like nobody's business. So what you might want to have invested in and have handy is Quick Stop. Uh, which stops the bleeding right away. And I'll give you a link for that product as well. But that's all you have to do with your, your infant in terms of grooming and care. The nails are the most important thing. You don't need to worry about their teeth because you're going to be feeding them a raw diet and giving them lots of bones so their teeth are going to be spotless all the time and their mouth's going to be in perfect condition. So there's absolutely no need for toothpaste and toothbrushes because that's just not something natural that occurs with dogs. So that's it. Make sure you handle your puppy all the time. Lots and lots of time on the feet and don't bath them too often. So now we're going to go and we're going to put Mr. Brown Collar back and we're going to get smoochers and we'll give you a bit of an idea of what you do with an older puppy. Here we are back again now. We put Mr. Brown Collar back with the puppies. They're all having a sleep now. And here we have our smoochers. Smoochers is going to present his best side to you there. He's going to focus on me. Smoochers is an excellent example of a dog with really strong eye contact. And Smoochers is our up and coming stud boy. And Smoochers is six months old now. Actually, that's not true. He's seven months old now. And he is a mini. So when your puppies are seven months old, they're going to be bigger than this because your puppies are mediums and this is a mini Labradoodle. Smoochers is a multi-generation Australian Labradoodle and he is a chocolate and you can see he has beautiful red on the end of his coat. So this is how long Smoochers coat is. Come back here buddy, you're getting too far away from me. And he has never had his hair cut. So you can see it's about probably four inches long, three, three to four inches long. It's a different color on the end because he was out in the sun all the time during the summer, so it turned his chocolate to red. But you can see his eyes and you can see his face, and that's because he gets his face trimmed every four weeks. He also has a bath every six weeks. We do that intentionally so he's at the groomer, he's happy, he's content, and he's not in the least bit concerned about having a bath. Now he's never had a bath with me. Uh, we are lucky and have a really nice big walk-in shower. The people who own the house before us, the gentleman was in a wheelchair. So it works great when you have dogs, very handy. 
So um, I often use the handheld shower and I just get in with them if I'm, I'm bathing them for any reason. It's very seldom that I bath them in between their grooming appointments. Mostly it's just the girls when they're pregnant and have just had their babies and they can't go to the groomer, then, then I do bath them. So for smoochers, we use the Seuss shampoo. Uh, even though it's puppy, we use that for their entire lives. So this is what we use with him and our groomer uses this same shampoo. If he gets himself into a peck of trouble, we, with him as well, will use the dry shampoo. And if he's, I don't know, if he's doing something and he's gotten him smell, himself smelly because he got wet, we'll use this grooming spray. This is not Seuss, um, but this one I really like because the smell is almost non-existent. Uh, it comes in a powder puff and a cucumber melon, and the dogs don't mind it all. You just spray it over them like that. And if they happen to be a smelly wet dog and you're going in the car or you're having company, that just takes the smelly wet dog away. That's, oh no, you're never smelly. So with Smoochers, what we do for grooming him is use the slicker brush still. Another brand of slicker brush that you might be interested in trying is this one, which is called Les Pouches. It's um, uh, actually from France, but it's sold through New York. These are expensive brushes. Uh, they're about $120, I believe, US. Uh, but I've had this one for years and years and years. Uh, I have a lot of dogs. They really stand up well. They are my favorite out of all of them. I like the way the bristles are angled. These ones are great for puppies. These are great for about the first year. This one I prefer um, when they're a little bit older because the angling works better and does better with the mats. So with this, you just want to do this, you just want to comb him, and you'll see probably smoochers will think he's getting petted because he's had a lot of experience being brushed. He considers this to be something that he loves because he gets to hug with mummy. The other dogs aren't there to take my attention away from him, and it's just a really pleasant experience. And you can see how nicely this brush goes through his coat. So we're right down to the bottom. This is where mats start. And this is going right through and just getting his coat right out really easily. So usually when I do them, um, I'm in the doodle den here. I put them on this table and I'll watch TV. Sometimes I watch the news. Lots of times we watch HGTV or maybe we'll be watching football. But it's great. It's relaxing. There's something for me to look at. We have a lot of time bonding together, and it's a really, really pleasant experience. And you can see how quickly his coat is all fluffed out. And you can see the difference where he's not been groomed. And yes, and he says, oh, this is nice, Mom. And then we just go up to his head. I like to support their heads when I'm doing their grooming. Just go over his ears. Now, the places where mats start on dogs are usually right here underneath the ear. This area here, can I borrow your head? This area here, and you'll see, it's already got a little tangle in it. So you want to brush through that. And that just like that. And you'll see I'm holding the brush like this, not like this. And then you just work your way over here and do that front. Oh, yes. And then you have some kisses. Yes, we have to have some kisses because kisses is the fun part. Smooters is also used to having a couple of treats when he's groomed, so he's kind of looking towards the treat jar behind me there, wondering when that's going to open up. And then we just go ever so gently around the face. Just, he probably is not making it so you can see, but just put your hand right near his nose, just a bit. Don't make him uncomfortable. And back we go, and then we do behind the other ear, if we were going to do him, and the other side of his face. And when you're doing his paws, Kind of start at the bottom there. Their armpits is the other area where you'll get a lot of mats. So we want to give them a big hug, a big bear hug. There. And then you go underneath there. And that's really all there is to grooming a Labradoodle. Obviously, we haven't done the entire dog. And then on his tail, sometimes they'll like to sit down. And you just pull that out. And if they want to sit down, because dogs get tired, let them sit down. Do something different. If you're going to do their stomach, just pick them up. You can hang on to their front paws, and you can do their tummy that way. I know you couldn't quite see that, but it would be like this. You just hold on to their front paws like this. 
he's not going to cooperate because he can't see me. And then you just take the brush and, and go down. And again, with the comb, you want to do it on the angle. And the comb will just make sure that you haven't missed anywhere. There isn't any mats underneath. And it's a little bit better for doing their heads and around their faces. And that's really all there is to it. Now, the other thing you want to do is their nails. This is probably the type of nail clipper that you're going to use. Uh, this is called um, a guillotine nail clipper. It has a control on it for how wide you open it if you want to have that extra measure of safety. I don't think any of my dogs need their claws clipped right now, but I'll just show you about how you do it. Smoochers has black claws. <laughs> His main thing in life is being hugged, so maybe he's just going to lie down. Death, maybe you're just going to lie down. So you just find the claw, and again, you just go to the very end. You put it in, the, in there. And you just snap like that. That's all there is to it. And you'll see how he doesn't, he's not the least bit concerned about it. He doesn't flinch because he has his claws clipped all the time. Then the other thing you're going to have to do regularly is clean the ears. Dogs, uh, Labradoodles in particular, have really hairy ears. And Smoochers has particularly hairy ears. We don't like to pluck their ears uh, because the hair is there for a reason. It helps to wick moisture away from dogs with flappy ears. Flappy ears is like a floppy ear. The flap is over top. But you also have to be really diligent about keeping their ears clean. So you can see his are nice and clean, and that's how they need to be all the time is pink. So you just need to use a little cotton ball, just regular ones that you buy from any grocery store. And this is the type of ear cleaner that we prefer to use. I will send you a link for this as well. You can buy it from Amazon. Many vet clinics also have it. This is the one we like because it has no alcohol, no fragrance, and none of the ingredients that tend to dry the ear out and make it a little itchy. So all you need to do, well, actually, which is you shake it. You want to make sure you have it nicely shaken. And then all you do is put a small amount into the ear canal. So we're just going to get Smoochers to come over here. And take his ear up. I'm trying not to have his bum right there in the shot. See if we can get him to cooperate here. <laughs> just do one little squeeze like that. And then what you want to do is a fairly firm pressure, massaging it down through into the ear canal. And the reason you're doing that is because that releases the wax and any buildup in their ear. It also spreads the product around so that you're getting the effect of the um, removing bacteria from their ear. So you want to do that for about 30 seconds or so. And they generally tend to like it. Now, if you have your dog crying at this point, you're going to want to go to the vet and have their ear checked and see if they have an infection. Then you take your little cotton ball and you just put it right in the top of the ear, just like that. You'll see it comes out perfectly clean. His ears are spotless and that's just to remove the excess moisture from this product because you don't want the moisture to be staying in the product, in the, in the ear rather. If you happen to have an ear infection or you smell your dog's ear, if it feels hot or if it smells yeasty, there's two routes to go. The more traditional and accepted route is putting your dog on what's called Suralan. That's the most common antibiotic for ear infections. Unfortunately, what can happen is with Suralan is your dog can build up a resistance to it. And sometimes when you have the infection, if you don't actually break down the wax and the infection that's built up, then you're putting the medication on top of the infection. It loosens it up a bit and it really just builds the infection up even more. So smoochers had an ear infection that wouldn't go away. He was on Suralan, it did nothing to help him. So I found this product, Zymox. This is also available from Amazon and it is another 100% natural uh, product. You use it every day for a week and it just breaks everything up amazingly. It's an incredible product. I'm gonna put smoochers down because he's had enough of being on the table. The amount of wax that came out of Smoochers' ears was incredible. 
and his infection was gone actually in five days. So I'm really fond of this product and this is what I will choose to use rather than Suralan. And I've spoken to my vet about it. We've discussed it. He knows that uh, the Suralan did not work um, as it often doesn't. And uh, he was really fond of this product as well. So it's, it's not something that's out there or anything, but it's really worth giving a try to. So that's smoochers and that's what you're going to have at about the six, seven month age for grooming. Now we're going to go get Ripple and we're going to show you how you deal with an adult Labradoodle and we'll show you how you groom her. Now here we are back with Ripple. So Ripple is a two-year-old adult multi-generation Australian Labradoodle and she is a mini. Ripple is a beautiful sable party, so she's very similar to Star from the Blonde Brownies litter in terms of her coloration. Can you just sit here for me, hon? Ripple is also pregnant. She's just uh, finishing up her first trimester, so you won't see any signs of her pregnancy. Um, but it does make her a little bit more needy at the moment emotionally. So this is the length that we like to keep our doodles at. You can see it's about two inches long. Um, one, whoops, ripples falling off the table there. One thing that is um, nicer when you keep the coat at this length is if you have it very short, it tends to have a, sort of a curl to it. Whereas once the coat is a little longer, it pulls that curl out and it becomes the true wavy coat that is what all of our dogs have. But when they're really short, it look, they'll look like they're curly when they're all tightened. You know, there's nothing to pull the weight of them down. So really, for the difference between Ripple and Smoochers in terms of care, there is no difference. We still do her, her ears every week. We do her nails, and we use the exact same products for grooming her. Uh, we do the same thing. I use my Le Pooches brush. Oh, and one thing I want to show you is you'll see there's hair here. These are non-shedding dogs. But of course, everybody has dead hair. You and I do when we brush our hair, so do the dogs. And that's what you'll see in the brush. If you have someone in your family who's highly allergic, then they should not be the person who grooms your Labradoodle. So what you wanna do with her is just the same as what you did with Smoochie. You just take the brush on the side here, you go over her coat and you give her a nice, nice time. And you'll see when I'm brushing her, there'll be a hair that comes off here and there uh, because we are getting rid of the dead hairs. And when the girls are pregnant, they often lose more hair than, than otherwise. That is a sort of natural part of being pregnant. So you'll see a little bit more hair flying around with Ripple than you will with, uh, say, Smoochers. So exactly the same thing, exactly the same process. You can see how quick and easy it is to get her coat from not being groomed at all to looking absolutely stunning. And you see there is quite a bit of hair with her because of her pregnancy. So that's really the only difference. The other thing I want to talk to you about with Ripple is this other Seuss product that we have that's Rescue Cream. This, this cream is a really good multi-purpose cream. You can use it if your dog has a burn, if he has a little cut, if they have a little irritation anywhere. It's safe to use, even I would use it with her, even though she's pregnant, it doesn't matter if they lick it off. It's an excellent little uh, treatment. So it's for, for wounds, abrasions, damaged skin. Uh, it's sort of like um, if you use a polysporin for, for people. Very similar sort of thing, but it's absolutely harmless when they, when they lick it. It's designed for dogs. So that's another great little product to have in your, in your little doggy medicine chest. And so that's it. That's all of the grooming that we're going to go through. Uh, you've got the idea now. You'll, you'll know what to ask a groomer about. And as I said in your handbook that you'll get the download link for from me, uh, there will be a full grooming guide in there with step-by-step uh, -step instructions for you to give to your groomer. So that's our update for this week. Now next week's video is going to be really exciting because it's the allocation week. I know all of our families are just waiting on pins and needles to learn which one of these puppies is going to be going home with them. So it's going to be a really fun video, uh, lots of information, lots of anticipation, looking forward to that one. And we hope that you'll join us and share in the excitement of all of the families. And we hope that you found the grooming information uh, useful and helpful today. And uh, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. And we really look forward to seeing you again. Thanks a lot.